took me a long time to gather up the courage to make this video. I thought about not doing it, but I think it's important for me to do it. I, I think it's really important to do it. So before we begin, however, I'd like to make a disclaimer and say that not everyone will have these post withdrawal effects. Uh, post withdrawal effects of uh, Lexapro only happen to certain people and surely not everyone will have it as bad as me. So I am an exception, but I still feel like it's important to talk about it because these effects or serious side effects and post withdrawal effects of, 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 of SSRIs are definitely possible and should be spoken of. One very famous guy about um, amongst the YouTube community called Douglas Block, he's a um, depression counselor. He had a really bad reaction to Prozac at the time, for example, and that spurred him into a, a state of agitated depression. So I'm not the only one and I think Again, this should be spoken of. Uh, it's very important to share because Lexapro is so glamorized and so easily prescribed and do doctors just give it away as if it was some innocuous drug that could harm anyone and it was completely banal. And since Prozac appeared, for example, it just, it just has appeared as this uh, housewife pop drug that everyone just takes at breakfast without even giving it a second thought. And it shouldn't be like this. This is a serious substance and it affects your brain at a deep level. It affects your brain chemistry at a deep level. And for some people, like me apparently, it can be quite dangerous. But another disclaimer I have to make is that, I, as I said before, the circumstances of my life at this time were a bit messy. I've been through a breakup. It wasn't a hard breakup. It was just a normal relation and a normal separation. But still, I lost a bit of the support network that I had. And that's, uh, yeah, maybe if I still had that support, things wouldn't have been this bad. And I think this is one thing that you should definitely have when you come off any medication or when you're trying to heal from depression, you should really work on your support network. But nonetheless, with the information that I now have, I can safely say that the mess that came upon my life in the past month, three months, was largely due to the post withdrawal effects of Lexapro, which I didn't even know could happen. And it caught me uh, to totally out of surprise. So anyway, I was uh, so proud that I quit this drug and for three weeks after I took my last pill, I was doing really well. I was actually feeling quite okay. But then I, I had booked a small holiday. I was quite excited about it. And one week before that holiday came, I just suddenly stopped sleeping. And I had insomnia before. This wasn't normal insomnia. This was the kind of insomnia where one night after another, after another, you just sleep for half an hour, then you wake up, then you sleep for maybe two hours, then you wake up, then you wake up at five in the morning, you can't sleep anymore, and it's just horrible. I took Zolpiderm again, which is a pill that I sometimes would take in, in case of emergencies. Um, I didn't want to take it too much because it's a benzo derivative, so it causes habituation. And another another thing that it also does is that it reduces deep sleep. So we need the stage three and the, the REM sleep and the Zolpiderm just makes you stay in the stage one and stage two of sleep. So I went back to a medicine that I hadn't taken for three years since my burnout and depression, which is Trazodone which is uh, an antidepressant that also has sedative, sedative side effects. It worked at the time and I also looked into something called CBTI, which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia. And this is interesting. It has some interesting techniques. I will put on the link below a video that I found really, really uh, complete on the matter. And it helped. For a week it helped and the insomnia went away. 
But then I started feeling really depressed. I was kind of in the middle of a professional uh, transition in my life uh, with some financial pr uh, pressure, but still I was very excited about it before. But when I started feeling depressed, everything just seemed horrible. Everything just seemed unsurmountable. My breakup seemed unsurmountable. Although I had been doing a normal grieving process for three months, things were fine. I was a bit sad about it but I was fine but all of a sudden everything just seemed dark and impossible to solve and hopeless and I I hadn't felt like this in three years and I didn't know what was going on and there was no reason for it I I don't have insane tendencies to get depressed I was depressed three years ago because I had really 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 hard life circumstances but now my circumstances weren't that bad so I started to feel it had something to do with the Lexapro and in fact this was the beginning of the post withdrawal effects of Lexapro I thought I had gone over the withdrawal and I thought it was over but from the research I made this is totally possible. Some people can experience post-withdrawal effects. This can be insomnia, it can be agitation, it can be anxiety, it can be depression, it can even be panic attacks. I put an article on the link below that illustrates this quite well. It seems quite, co seems quite complete for me uh, because, uh, yeah, because this can definitely happen and um, it's important to acknowledge that if you have some kind of side effects a month to three weeks after stopping Lexapro. It's probably not because you're inherently depressive or there's something inherently wrong with you. It's probably because of um, yeah, the post-withdrawal effects. What are the post-withdrawal effects? Is your brain realizing something is missing. This, your brain, well, the SSRIs, they help your brain produce serotonin. So your brain has been relying on the substance to produce serotonin for way too long and it doesn't realize that the, the, the substance is missing until a couple of uh, weeks later. There's the withdrawal effects where it kind of realizes, it kind of get, gets a bit um, disoriented, but the post-withdrawal effects happen because your brain takes time to realize the substance is missing. And when it does realize it, um, this can last for months, according to the research, and your mood, mood can be affected for months. In my case, this was complicated by further life circumstances because I had something else happened. I had a health issue right before Christmas and I stopped sleeping again, but again, <laughs> I had problems in my life before, I had insomnia before, and this was not normal. This was, I, I really knew at this point there was something wrong with my brain. I just stopped sleeping, not even sleeping pills were doing the trick, and it was, uh, it was really, 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 really hard. During Christmas I had to work, and, and it was horrible. I had a lot, a lot of things to do, a lot of decisions to take, and I couldn't take them anymore because I wasn't functioning anymore. My brain wasn't functioning and I thought I was going insane. I even started having some uh, OCD symptoms, which I had had before during my burnout three years ago. And on Christmas Eve, basically, I was calling the, the, the mental hospital to ask if I could be checked in. and. After New Year, I talked to a shrink and he said I should go back on Lexapro, which is totally insane because I tried to tell him, no, uh, this, this Lexapro was what caused it. And now I'm, pos I'm positive with the research that I made and the people that I spoke to after that this is a post ritual effect. And uh, yeah, I just felt completely alone and completely out of control and without any treatment and my anxiety just got worse. So did the insomnia, despite of all the sleeping pills that I was taking. And of course, in the middle of all this, suicidal thoughts started to appear because everything seemed hopeless. My professional life, especially, I wasn't having the courage to deal with the challenges that I was being presented. And I uh, went to the emergency room and I told the shrink, look, you either give me something else now or I stay here because that's it. I have to take something. And he gave me pregabalin, which is um, 
medicine for generalized anxiety, which solved the anxiety caused by uh, the insomnia, but not the insomnia itself. Um, and in the meantime, the depression got really, really, really worse. I, I, I had, um, I started having a really hard time staying alone without having really dark thoughts. So I had to find another shrink that I now trust more. And in the next video, I will share my um, final diagnosis, which is a bit scary actually, and the treatment op options that I'm now following to solve this situation. Okay, happy healings.